Hello everybody, this is Michael Filesage checking in here today and I hope you guys are doing great. Uh, today I wanted to release the first SAB video of this channel. Uh, today I'm going to be doing some agar to grain inoculation inside a SAB. I have six jars inside the SAB and I have two plates and I want to split the plates each three ways. Um, so one little wedge per jar. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. As you can see, I'm now spraying the inside of the SAB with soap water. Spray it nice and well. Um, yeah, you see how I'm doing it? I'm just going from both sides and shooting it on the other side so I can trap all sorts of stuff. The SAB, I believe, is a 110 liter SAB. Uh, so it is a very big SAB. So I can fit a lot of jars and stuff in there. I could still do more jars. And I'm, I was pointing there around the, the center of your field of vision because over there, that's where once you spray with the SAB, a lot of water can pool down and you, you're gonna have uh, little puddles of water and they could drop on, they could drop down uh, if you if you missed it too much and that actually does happen at the worst possible timing in this video. So take it as a learning experience. <laughs> but you'll see, it, but, but it's actually good because it demonstrates exactly uh, what I'm talking about here to be careful of. So uh, it might be contaminated um, that plate, but you know, it is what it is. So yeah, I'm, I, if you saw, I sprayed the sleeves um, I, I wipe down my sleeves and then I wipe and then I alcohol wipe my gloves. Uh, you want to make sure your sleeves are also clean. I'm actually doing this uh, basically naked just with uh, with some boxers and I took a shower before this although it's I do it without a shower often. Um, but yeah I, I always do take off my shirt at least. And here I put some foil on here. So you see those two plastic containers? Yeah that's basically what I'm going to use as the floor of my sab. Um, so yeah, this is pretty simple. I'm not doing any transfers or anything. So I just need one, uh, one little elevated area. So as you can see, I, I left it inside. I left the plates inside the first, um, Tupperware. And, uh, that's because when I spray it, I, I kill two birds with one stone. I, I, or whatever, <laughs> when I spray the sab, it's not going to get hit by the soap water and get all that dirt on there. So yeah, I, I, I made it, um, into a two tier thing here. So I have the little raised floor on in the corner now. And you want to raise the stuff that you want to clean, keep clean in the sab generally because uh, a lot of the a lot of the particles will drop down to the floor once you uh, mist it with soap water. All the mold and bacteria and stuff. So yeah, uh, I to protect the lids from the soap water, I just put uh, some layers of foil. Uh, so I don't have to do every single one individually. So yeah, in that little, uh, in that little, um, uh, foil packet there, I got my, um, I got my Sharpie and I got my, uh, what you call it, my, uh, scalpel and my scalpel holder and the, um, a paper towel soaked in alcohol that I used. Uh, earlier to wipe down the tools that I put there. So they've already been alcohol wiped. Um, so now I'm going to use make another alcohol soaked paper towel. I'm going to be using this one to wipe the lids and wipe the agar plates before I use them. And the one that's already inside the little packet that, that was already inside, that one I'm going to be using to just wipe down the scalpel in between touching agar. So as you can see, the way that I'm wiping the lid, I'm not touching my gloves on the lid. I'm just touching the alcohol-soaked paper towel, if you look closely. For obvious reasons, because I just don't... I mean, I mean, you could do it probably without it, but, you know, with the sab work and stuff, or sterile technique in general, just doing little things uh, as correctly as you can will add up. So, you know, just minimize your chances where you can, basically. If you can do something to do, do it better, then then do it better. So yeah, same concept here. I'm paying a lot of attention to the sides of the lid. That is very important. So yeah, after I'm done, I'm just going to um, fold it because that will keep the alcohol from evaporating a little longer. And then now you, you just want to make sure that 
okay get mentally prepared for what you're going to do your actions what you're going to do you know have a visual of what you're going to do and set everything up so it's as smooth as possible now here i'm going to take note of the name of the plate and then i'm going to write it on each of the uh, tapes by the way as you notice i'm using unmodified lids but i'm also using modified lids here you're going to see uh, with basically a hole in just some micropore, but these are um, unmodified right now. So I'm just keeping a piece of tape, Gorilla Tape, to just keep the lids together so I don't have to take apart two separate uh, <laughs> two separate things to, you know, open the plate. Uh, sorry, open the jar, because it is a pain in the butt. So this, this just helps it. Uh, so I'm just going to write it. So I'm going to use the um, the tape as basically just also a label, very convenient. So yeah, just writing it down here. Um, you wanna make sure that you do this so that you don't forget uh, which jars are which plates. And then I also write down the date. I actually wrote down the rate, date wrongly. It's actually December 3rd. So the next step is to wipe down the plate itself. So I'm getting the alcohol soaked paper towel ready. Yeah, take off the wrap. And as you notice, I'm not touching the sides. I'm avoiding touching the sides constantly from my plates. So we're gonna take this, I'm gonna spray it with some more alcohol. See, I'm holding it. I'm just avoiding touching the plate directly as much as I can, especially the sides. So yeah, at this point, I put the plate back onto uh, an unclean plate, basically the plate below, um, which is not ideal. But here, I'm. by the way, I'm just uh, mapping out which pieces go where. So I have two different se separate pieces of transfer on this plate. So I got two basically different mycelium uh, colonies there. So uh, I'm going to use the smaller one for one plate and I'm gonna split the bigger one into two plates. So here we're gonna spray the uh, thing again and I'm just gonna wipe it again, wipe the lids again, uh, making sure that I don't touch the the pen where I wrote with the marker because it's going to take it off. Just to be sure, I'm just going to wipe it down again. Put it off to the side, wipe down my hands. And then we're going to unscrew the lids a little bit, a little more than a little bit, uh, just for easy, you know, opening and closing of the lids when I have the wedge with one hand because you want to do it quickly, smoothly, uh, fluidly, but quickly because it, it can be a bit of a balancing act sometimes with the wedge on the scalpel. Thankfully, this time all six of them went very smoothly. Now, now I'm going to properly flame sterilize it. Now I know the alcohol thing looks close and it looks dangerous, but don't worry, I was aware and it's actually far above the alcohol. So <laughs> the flame is far above the alcohol. Yeah, I'm just white. Um, I'm just heating it up. Want to get it all red? Notice how I am also heating up the scalpel holder itself. Rather, like I'm heating up the scalpel, obviously, but also the holder, because with uh, usually with transfers, I don't really bother from plate to plate because it's like small pieces. But because I'm going to be, you know, using wedges now with this little thing, I'm going to. It's going to be carrying the wedge thing. So uh, sometimes it, the wedge itself can touch the handle and stuff. So I want to make sure that that's also properly sterile. So yeah, just uh, separating the wedges now. I remember I made the plan earlier of what wedge goes where and how the pieces should go. So I'm just taking one of the cultures here. And now I want you guys to notice on the big droplet on the on the almost bottom right there, it's going to drop onto my plate at the worst possible time. Did you see that? Oh, man, <laughs> that really bummed me out at this point. But, you know, that's that's the way she goes. I should have wiped it. I wanted to wipe it. It was in my mind, but I completely forgot because, you know, th that's the thing. There's a lot of things that you got to keep in mind. And, and, you know, sometimes you forget a thing or two and that's what happens. But you know what? 
that, that I hope you guys can learn from that. So now we're going to inoculate the rest of the jars. And as you can see, the way that I'm holding the plate, I am not putting my hand or anything over the plate. See how I'm angling it to the side? That's because I don't want anything to fall on there from my hand or, or from the scalpel blade or whatever. Um, and I also make sure that I don't touch anywhere inside the plate. Um, so yeah, as you can see now, I'm going to stab it at a certain angle. See how I'm stabbing it like that? So that I want to avoid contact with the blade holder itself. Uh, and as you can see, just fluid motion, just stick it in there. Do it calmly, but do it fluidly. Uh, you know, it does take a bit of concentration to do it right. And as you can see, I've already ditched the lid, right? Because um, at this point, I don't need it. It's all going in. Uh, but I also want to make sure, again, that I don't put my hand on there or anything. So now I'm trying to angle this properly so I can get it in. Uh, so it takes a little bit of experience to get it right so that, you know, the wedge doesn't fall off of the blade or anything because it is a bit of a balancing act and the blade is sharp so it could cut through the agar with uh, with just like gravity. Um, so you want to angle it properly. And now I'm just closing all of the lids. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these jars out just to make space for the other ones, for the other three. And this is why I recommend having a big sab anyways. See how much space I have anyways? I don't have to take it out, but I just do anyways, because uh, I could. Um, but yeah, with, with the spacious sab, it makes working in it a lot easier. You could do all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, and also make sure your armholes are big. You don't want them to be small because smaller armholes will create more air currents. So now we're going to repeat the process. I'm going to wipe down all the jar lids with alcohol. So now I'm getting the new plate ready, I'm taking note of the name, and I'm going to write it down onto the plates, as before. So now we are going to be cleaning the plate. Take off the wrap, and I'll get the alcohol soaked paper towel ready and I like to check to make sure there's still alcohol in there by just seeing how the paint comes off now if the plate is really old and the name was written a long time ago then it, sometimes it doesn't come off but usually you know within a couple of months it, it comes off pretty easy so yeah again you know take, making sure that the sides are wiped very well and then I put it off on the edge so that it's easier for me to pick up with my left hand right because because if I because that way I don't risk the chance of accidentally opening the plate or getting my finger in between the the, the lids. So uh, that's why I, I leave it on the side like that. And I'm, I'm telling you guys about the little water droplet in the middle, which was the cause of problem earlier, so we're gonna wipe it down this time. Um, yeah. Not with the, um, the, the paper towel that we used to wipe the lids and the uh, agar plates, but the one that we use to wipe the blade. Even though I haven't used it at this point, it's mostly, I use it mostly for like agar transfers if I'm doing a bunch of transfers and get some agar bits in there. Uh, so yeah, got this alcohol wiped again and we're going to wipe this down once more. Just to be sure, you know, maybe some may say it's a, it's a bit overkill, but I just like to if I can do it, then I will do it to help it out a little. Again, I want to also avoid my hands going above even the jar lids as much as I can. So I get everything prepared once more, get them in a nice line, you know, mentally prepare for what I'm going to do. Just well, open the lids a little bit. So now we're going to heat up the scalpel again, and I just want to make note, uh, when you're usually doing this, I when I'm usually doing this, I put a bunch of like jars on top of the sab or some, some weight holder, um, some place holder, uh, just so that the sab doesn't move when I bump into it, which I will generally. Um, so that will create some air currents, so you don't want that. You don't want your sab to move. The only reason that there's nothing on here is obviously because I'm filming it. So yeah, heating it up again, you know, getting getting the the getting the blade holder heated up as well. 
and here we are see how smoothly i go in i don't want to move the plate around too much uh, sorry i don't want to move the scalpel around too much you know i just want to keep it as stationary as possible and being very mindful of where it is at all times same with the plate and again i'm angling the plate so that you know the 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 scalpel is not directly on top of it it's at an angle so it reduces the chances of anything falling in i'm going to make like a little peace sign here like a little nuclear sign for three jars that's what i usually like to do um so yes again see how i'm angling it okay now i'm going to put it there very carefully very smoothly i want to avoid touching anything around the jar with my scalpel or anything i don't want to even touch the agar wedge around the jar so you you know just want to make sure to the best of your ability that nothing touches anything There we go. Now the final one. See how, like, like I'm moving almost uh, in slow motion, you know? I don't know if you can really tell here, but I was very, very cautious. Uh, very, very, but, you know, fluid. So you, working in a sab, you want to be very, very mindful of your movements. You don't want to make any air currents and all that. So yeah, finally, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to shake up, show you guys uh, what, what you do after inoculation. Now, before you do this with an unmodified lid like I'm doing here, make sure you close the lid a little bit, or at least that's what I like to do. I just like to close, tighten the lid and then shake it up like crazy uh, so that bits of mycelium can go here and there. Uh, but make sure that you remember to crack the lid again if you're doing unmodified so it can get some gas exchange. So I'm shaking the crap out of it. And what I like to do is uh, I like to place the agar wedge onto the side of the jar once I'm going to like leave it, once I'm finished shaking it, so that I could keep track of the progress so I can better gauge when I should shake or not. Because if it's hidden inside the grains, it can be hard to, like, you, you know, you won't know maybe until it's like way too colonized. Uh, you could shake it a little earlier so yeah just leave it on the side like that and that's all guys thanks for watching michael file sage check it out